thought morning sickness was meant to be in the morning. Four o'clock is the morning, babe. No, morning is eight until twelve. It'll all be over by this afternoon. Well, it better be. And then we can go shopping and I can get you what you want for Christmas. I want to stop feeling like this. Anyway, I want to wait, then I can get myself some stylish maternity gear. I don't want to look like a rock in a schmuck. Oh. Oh. Hiya. Oh, you look rough. <laughs> Thanks. Morning sickness. Call it what you like. I had it round the clock where you and Andy. Eh? I'm not going to do my shopping. Have you done yours yet? No. I know we're not getting presents. For anybody. Oh. Not even your nearest and dearest. No, <laughs> so you don't have to worry about buying for us either. Right. Oh well. I've saved a five of them. See ya. Oh. Hiya. Oh. You look how I feel. A touch of morning sickness, Anna. That's no art. I have been kept awake all night by a flashing turkey. I don't know why, but it brought back some awful memories of Les. Hey, talking a sick. Did you see his face when he saw what we'd done to her? <laughs> Making out that it were a giant Father Christmas. <laughs> yeah, but if Santa Claus looked like that, right, most blokes, they wouldn't leave a mince pie and a glass of sherry by the fireplace. Oh, no. They'd say, you go on up, love. I'll stay and give Santa an hand. <laughs> yeah. Hey, had any bright ideas about that car? No, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it. Steve's been sweet, so I don't want to upset him again. Why, man? I know that pregnancy does funny things to folk, but Carol MacDonald, being considerate. It's not going to last, though, is it? Here! I hope you're not feeding that dog off your plates. No. Well, soup ain't so well. I'm fine, I'm just late for work. Look, you can't go to work on an empty stomach. Well, I'll get some at later. And you haven't even walked the dog yet. Oh, no. Hey, you could walk for me, though, couldn't you? Look, I'm doing nothing till you tell me what's wrong. It's Maria. Oh, f don't look at me like that. Monica does that. Yeah, cos Monica's more sense than you have, bothering about that one. Yeah, well, how can I not be bothered about her? She's got herself into a right mess. Yeah, and who does she come running to her? The lad she didn't think were good enough for her when it didn't suit her. Yeah, well, she didn't. Hey, that's a point. Thanks for walking, Monica. But I never said I would! It's not just embarrassing. It's from way beyond that. Especially if you compare our relationship with how you and your dad are. Hey, me and my dad have had our moments. Yeah, but your dad would never do anything like what my mum's doing to us now. She's upset, yeah. She's won. No. The only way she wins is if she splits us up. And that's not going to happen, is it? There is one good thing, though. She's making it very easy to ask your dad to give me away. You don't think he'll mind, do you? You know, you do make me laugh sometimes. Oi! If you want this wedding to go ahead, you better be very careful what you say next. Well, I don't think you know what difference you've made. Not just to me and Joshua's lives, but to me dad's and all the minute you want fruit, do we? OK. Wedding's still on. And every morning I wake up with a big smile on my face just because you're in my life. Oh, you can stop it now, though, cos you're embarrassing me. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. I thought you was coming to the shop to pick the meat up for tonight. Not to talk to her? She spoke me day enough just by me seeing her. Can you open up? I have a great deal to get through. I'll tell you something, you get a kick out of hurting your own daughter. As I said, I have a lot to do and I won't get it done standing here swapping insults with you. Does this all not bother you that it's destroying Claire? At times, she'll be at her happiest. I have a job to do. I do not let personal agendas interfere with that. But I'll tell you something. None of this would have happened if you'd applied the same standards. You are? You employed my daughter as a nanny. But you couldn't keep it on a professional level, could you? Oh, no. It didn't take you long to realise that she was a very convenient replacement for your dead wife. Well, you might fool her, but you don't fool me. So, how did it go with you and Tyrone last night? Oh, that hasn't all started again, has it? Excuse me, Blanche, I was talking to Maria. They're hardly Burton and Taylor, are they? Eh? Oh, they were the posh and becks of a lifetime ago. They were a 
a damn sight more glamorous than a flipping footballer and a lass who became famous doing now but bout. Uh, hello, 21st century Colin. Footballers are like the most glamorous people around. After mature news agents. <laughs> well, there's more to life than glamour. I mean, Tyrone's a lovely lad. I've told Maria she could do a lot worse. She already has done. Since when did anyone ask for your opinion? Hey, 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 that's enough, the pair of you, come on. Maria, for what it's worth, I'm with Audrey on this. Tyrone may not be Richard Burton or David Beckham, but there's a lot to be said for a trustworthy, down-to-earth fella like him. Take no notice. Trustworthy and down-to-earth is all right for the likes of our Deirdre. But if, alas, with your looks has to settle for that, then there's something wrong somewhere. Yeah, Dad. Hey, are we ready for this? I say, are we ready for this? Huh? Are you not having tea, Yvonne? Or would that be seen as an inducement? Well, I haven't actually been offered one, but I always bring my own flask, just to avoid any such misunderstandings. Where's your manners, Ashley? Must be the stress. He's a sensitive soul, is our Ashley? I don't know why you're being nice to her. Not the way she's been acting. Oh, do you know what this is? Thought not. It's a hat. I'll be needing your bank statements from February 2001. All right. All right, along. What can I do you for? Well, uh, I think I'll have a nice fillet steak from your tea, Fred. And shall we take the cost of it off your papers, as usual? Audrey's just done my hair for the cost of her papers and two boxes of Christmas cards. <laughs> no, oh Lord. No, you know I never do that like that, Rita. No. All my transactions are above board and go through my books. Eh? Always have done. <laughs> Everyone, every time. Oh, so that's why Audrey set me up to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Having a laugh at our expense. Oh, oh did she? <laughs> We're friends like that, eh? <laughs> I hate owing him the money. I'd rather it was anyone else, even Candice. Well, no, actually, not Candice. Like I'd ever have 200 quid to spare. I don't see what your problem is. I can't think of anyone who'd be nicer about it than Tyrone. Well, that is the problem. I feel like I'm using him. Well, I am using him, but I'm not meaning to. Well, pay him back then? I can't afford to. Audrey's been dead understanding about it, hasn't she? Yeah, very. Do you know what? I'm lucky she's not sad me. And all she can say is how I should get back with Tyrone. And how he reminds her of a dead husband. It must be a terrible thing to have to cope with. All these people you've done wrong to being so nice about it. Oh, it is. Do you know, it just makes me feel worse, though. I'll tell you what would make you feel better. Borrowing the money off Audrey. Claire, how would that make me feel better? Well, then you could pay Tyrone back. And you'd only have Audrey to worry about, wouldn't you? Oh, a vodka and tonic, Kira, love, please. A large one. Sounds serious. Norris hasn't been showing you his Christmas novelty boxer shorts, has he? Oh, that sort of picture I want to keep in mind for long. Oh, Audrey, <laughs> I think I might have got us both in a spot of bother. Oh? Well, there was this hard-faced Harridan from the Inland Revenue in the butchers, and I go merrily in, burbling on about forgetting the paper bill for a bit of meat, boasting about the deal we did on me hairdo. It's my mother. Your mother? Oh, Claire, I am sorry, love. Yeah, me too. But you've night to worry about, Rita. The only person she's interested in nailing is Fred. And you're right, she's hard-faced. Les, if you're taking Sella to work and not picking up your flipping fare, you're fired. Season of goodwill <laughs> or not. No, we are buying you a Christmas present. Karen wasn't exactly full of the festive cheer this morning. Mmm. Anyway, I thought you'd done your Christmas shopping. No, we're doing it today. Oh. So, how come Amy's got a prezi from Daddy? Flaming no. hell. That was supposed to be a secret. Hello, streetcars. Ah, Mr Ramsey. Yeah, it's on its way. Five minutes tops. So, what did you get of it? A baby keyboard. Eh? Well, she might be a musical genius. <laughs> Actually, it's just something she could make a row on to send the Barlow's bonkers. 
You are a flaming rotten scumbag. <laughs> If you want to speak to you again, you go back round there! Or you get it off of Look, I can't do that! Well, if you won't, then, then I will... Have you thought about what you're doing? You're going to snatch a Christmas present off a ten-month-old baby? Well, it's either that or... What's the betting? That's got something to do with this car. At least you can't blame me this time. But don't you go sticking your oar in. Why should I? Seems to be doing perfectly well without me. Oh, I'm just sick of all these arguments. I mean, it's not with us. You can guarantee it's about us. One thing, when Karen loses it, she certainly does lose it. I don't know why Steve puts up with it sometimes. He loves her. Karen! Do you know what? You never miss an opportunity to cozy up to him. Oh, that car! Why would he let her scream at him in the street like that? Well, the only person Karen really loves is herself. This is Nevada, baby, is it? Turn up! The car! The present is all the same, Steve. It boils down to you letting that slapper come in between us. Up and ahead, not that! Hello. If you're here for the pudding, the factory girls have just about left you some. Oh, right. Well, I'm not worrying about my figure. Mind you, no, is anybody else, so I shall have some. Roy, don't you think Audrey's got a fabulous figure? And never mind for her age, she's lovely for any age. Well, <clears throat> I've, I've always considered Audrey to be the most elegant of ladies, if, if that is not too bad. I don't know who's more embarrassed, Roy or Audrey. Oh, <laughs> excuse me, Hayley, I've been flattered and called elegant. I can take that embarrassment any day of the week. Yeah, I'll have some now. We're down to our last helping of flattery, but there's plenty of pudding. Listen, Maria gets enough flattery, she'll just stick to the pudding. Well, I I'll bring it over. Thank you, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> this pudding idea is really cool, Tom. Yes, and while we're handing out compliments, I think a, a, a cheery smile and, and a friendly face, it helps. I, mm, I can see I'm going to have to watch you, Roy Cropper. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I mean... Roy, Roy, wind up. <laughs> yes. Thank you. I've been thinking. I reckon I've taken advantage of Tyrone's good nature. Well, I wouldn't disagree with that. So, I was wondering if I could borrow the money from you to pay him back. From me? Do you know you take the biscuit for cheek, lady? You do realise that. I just can't bring myself to face Tyrone while I still owe him. First you take £200 without asking, then you let me blame Candice. Audrey, I just don't know what else to do. You know I wouldn't ask if you didn't think I was the softest touch going, right? <sighs> Oh, go on then. Oh, Audrey, thank you. Come here. <laughs> oh, well, come here. Oh. Getting more and more popular by the minute. Oh, well, more stupid by the minute, I promise you. <laughs> thank you for this one. I didn't mean to hurt you, babe. I'm carrying your child, Steve. Kind of changes things, that. Can't just forget it when you go behind my back and lie to me. Hang on a minute, you never forget. You're like a flipping elephant when it comes to remembering stuff I've done wrong. What? Kieran, uh, half a bit of please then, whatever Deirdre and Blanche have. Evening, ladies. Hello. Evening. There's just always something there to remind me, isn't there? You know, if it's not Tracy, then it's Amy. If it's not Amy, then it's that car. Fine, I'll get him to kick Tracy out. <laughs> oh, I wish. But there is something we can do. Right, here's my white wine spritzer. Hiya. Yeah. Karen? Uh, the car. Oh, Karen, we've just come in here for a quiet drink. Do you think it's caused enough arguments? Yeah, yeah. So I've got an idea. So we sell it. Where have you got it from? Audrey. What, you've nicked it again? No, of course not. I borrowed it off her. Why? Well, cos I didn't want me and you to be... Well, to be about money. Well, we're not. At least I don't think we are. I know, but while I still hold you, I just thought that you'd think that that's all I wanted you for. I don't mind. I'm just glad you wanted me for summer. Ty, don't say that. That's awful. No, 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 I didn't mean it to be awful. I meant, oh, if there's anything you need, I'm here for you. Why? I'm horrible to you. Everyone says so. Say that I don't deserve a mate like you. No, they don't. Well, Candice does. And I bet Vera doesn't all. Yeah, well, I don't care what other people think. If you're in trouble, I want to be the first person you come to, not the last. Well, that just makes me feel worse than ever. Can't say the right thing, can I? 
Oh, don't be soft now. Come on, you were there for me when I needed you, and that's the most important thing. I'll tell you what. Do you fancy having a meal tomorrow night, eh? My flat, I'll cook. What, just me and you? Oh, unless you want me to bring candies. Three and oily, please. Oh. <laughs> um, so... Uh... Right. I've been waiting all day for this. What is it? I've had my mind going through all sorts. I say all sorts. From you to emigrate in, to having twins. Let's get the wedding over first. You can't be sure these days. Well, we're not emigrating, even though with my mum around it's very tempting. This might be the daftest thing you've ever heard. But I was hoping you'd consider giving me away. Me? Hey. Well, you're the nearest thing I've got to a dad. I don't know about it being the daftest thing I've ever heard. I think it's about the nicest. So you'll do it, then? I don't know as I should. Oh. Well, you've got someone closer to your father than me. Do you really think I'd ask her after everything she's done? She's your mother. Yeah, who even refuses to come to the wedding? This morning... Ashley were telling me what a difference I'd made to your lives. Oh, you have, Claire, love, in so many ways. Well, you've changed mine and all. I reckon if I hadn't fallen in love with Ashley, I'd have fallen in love with you. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that. Say yes, Dad. Make everybody happy. Claire, love. I'd be so proud. Oh dear. I've got, I've got, I've got, I think I've got a call coming. <coughs> if you think about it, you're going to get thousands. Each. Yep, yeah, but just think of all the money we'll lose compared to what it was worth new. It didn't cost you a penny. How can you be losing anything? Karen. No, I'm sorry, because the only person it's cost is me. And it's cost me a hell of a lot of self respect. Which is pretty rich, considering you never had any to begin with. You know what? You might be old, but it won't stop me from throttling you. Just shut up, all of you. Thank you. Now, I think you've all made the case for selling the damn thing quite eloquently. This car has caused nothing but row after row after row. Well, actually, it's also got us about as a family. And I've not been in out so comfortable since I had a hard wick's funeral. I rode with the family. Uh, listen, you. Flashing throughout the day is one thing, but flashing all night, it's not all. Fred, you dirty beggar. Not me. She's talking about Goblin Gordon. <laughs> it gets better. I have been dreaming all night long about being chased by a ten-foot flashing bird. I keep having that dream. See, you come in tomorrow dinner and not join that food poisoning lottery over at Cafe, and I shall see what I can do. Right. Ken's right. Aren't you sick of all this arguing and rowing? Adrian? Oh, sell it. I'm only an old lady. I just know I shall be bullied into doing whatever the rest of you want. So, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll have an early night. Oh! What an unexpected pleasure. Uh, uh, well, seeing as how it's outside office hours, can I get you a drink? No, thank you. Uh, I finished with the shop. Uh, trust we have a clean bill of health. Well, I'll tell you better in the morning when I've done the pub. I'll be starting here first thing in the morning. Are you not stopping for another? Oh, we were just coming to see you. No, really. You've been stirring it, Mother. Yeah, well, at least Gran's on my side. This isn't about sides, Tracy. Oh, it is. It's about us against you. And me. Actually, Karen, I think everyone has to agree. Uh, well, then she's going to say no, isn't she, just for the sake of it. Face it, Karen, you've lost. Again. You must be getting used to losing by now. Oh, no, it's you who's losing, love. You could have thousands, and you don't even have to sell your baby. Oh, I don't need to sell my baby anymore. Not now the father's helping to support her. Even bought her a Christmas present. Oh, no, sorry, was that from both of you? Can you two just stop for one second? Oh, well, this is down to her, isn't it, Steve? Do you know what they want to dance to her tune? Well, it's not just the tail wagging the dog anymore, is it? It's the dog herself. Tracy, that's enough. Sure, if I weren't pregnant, I would rip your flipping head off. Uh, Tracy, just listen for a minute. Oh, uh, did you not hear her threatening me? 
Do you know, it really gets to you, doesn't it? I'm having Steve's kid. Well, I'll tell you something. You can play all the games you like till you are blue in the face, but he will always come home to his family. Now, will you just tell her you're going to sell the car and she can't do nothing to stop us? <laughs> Like, anybody's gonna listen to what you want. We could get a new car that hasn't got anything to do with Karen and Steve. Nah. No, I don't want a new car. Me neither. Oh, and I just want a bit of peace. And me. And selling the car was a perfectly sensible solution, which I could have explained to Tracy if you hadn't interfered. It can't be a perfectly sensible solution, not if she thought of it. And that's exactly why it's sensible, because it stops all this squabbling. Well, we wouldn't be squabbling if you lot weren't doing deals in pub. Consorting with the enemy. We don't have enemies. I do. Well, she threatened to throttle me. Oh. <laughs> she wouldn't be the first one to have that idea. Look, can we please just stop? Because the car is staying. Fine. If that's how you want it. Yeah, it is. So go on. Get lost, loser. Tracy, for goodness sake, grow up. No, well, she is, isn't she? She keeps losing to me. Oh, I'm sick of this. Come on. Do you know what? I tried to be reasonable, Steve. Well, as reasonable as a conversation can be between you two. Well, it wasn't me that started it, was it? It was her! Oh, whatever. And you know what frightens her the most? That one day she might lose Steve to me and all. In your dreams? In my dreams, Karen. Or in your nightmares. 